Good afternoon, I'm Bridget Taylor and this is Currency Wars. Today I'm joined by Andre Ehrenstein from RMB as well as Andre Siliers from Treasury One. But let's first have a look at what happened on the news this week and what currency um, sparks have, have obviously landed up in quite severe movements on the South African Rand particularly. The recent terror attacks in Paris have both shocked and appalled the globe. The continued action by the most influential countries will be of interest as we approach the end of 2015. Meanwhile, currency volatility and dollar strength are driving the divergence between the US Fed and the ECB. 66% of the market has priced in a December hike for the US Fed, and this was cemented by various hawkish statements from the central bank officials. However, meanwhile, back at, in South Africa, the RAND is now the worst performing currency among its emerging market peers, and the slump has been driven by a pool of negative um, data that is both from commodity prices tumbling, risk off trades, dollar strength, as well as the high possibility of a Fed rate hike in December, and the potential of a sovereign ratings downgrade. These fears saw the RAND remaining firmly weaker, trading as high as 14.38 in the past week. And on the back of this, it, it was very interesting to note that the RAND rate of deterioration against the euro as it markedly underperforms. Today's South African Reserve Bank Monetary Policy Committee decision is biased 60-40 to an unchanged decision. The call will not be an easy one as the central bank is dealing with rising inflation from imported food prices as South Africa faces a drought, as well as the retail sales which show signs of a less than confident consumer. Now that, we know the land. now that we know the lay of the land, I'd like to welcome Andre and Andre, Andre squared. We've got MPC, we've got all types of niceness happening in Europe. We've got this divergence. So there's quite a lot I think we've got to try and cover in the show today. Let's first focus on um, the fallout from what we've seen with regards to terror attacks. It seems relatively muted in financial markets, but obviously a horrific situation that we'll have to keep an eye on. Andre, maybe you want to elaborate. Yeah, I think it just points to the worsening geopolitical situation that we've had. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to remain very unstable. Yeah. You know, there's potential for, for sparks rising up pretty much even in Russia. Well, this is the thing with the Syrian attacks. I mean, this risk of trade, I think, is something that we need to consider. I mean, how long do you think this is going to persist? Ah, uh, that's how long is a piece of string. Yeah. I think, I think the, when you look at what's actually happening, it's now you've got a global policy towards dealing with, with geopolitical issues mm. in, in the Middle East. And I, and I think that was a ne that's a necessary condition for it to actually be addressed. Yeah. Well, they have to get aggressive. I mean, there's no way about it. I think that they, if anything, you know, watching the solidarity in France, watching people stand together, making statements that we will not be moved and taking um, severe action has obviously given some form of uh, respite to what's happened, despite the fact that there is no words to describe what happened on Friday. So maybe give us an idea just from that risk of trade, Andre. You know, we're looking at less, we're going to focus now overseas. I don't want to look at the South African market for now, but that divergent trade that we've been talking about for a little while with the ECB potentially um, more dovish and loosening and then you've got the US Fed you still on that um, bandwagon of looking for 2016 which I know you are yes no I'm still remaining on the 2016 and I think but I think the divergence will continue I think it's definitely on the cards mm -hmm. for the beginning of 2016 an interest rate increase what throws a little bit of turmoil for Yellen and, uh, and company is the fact that the oil price has declined sure. significantly over the last couple mm -hmm. of days. Yesterday went below 40. So that creates downward pressure on inflation again. Once again, that's why I say I don't think they will increase interest rates now. Uh, so I go against that 66 and a third percent. I'm on the 33. <laughs> yeah. But even if they change their interest rate policy, policy in January, February and increase rates, uh, from a European side, it will remain under pressure. The uh, quantitative easing will continue for a long time and the divergence will continue. So euro down, uh, I would reckon approaching the parity levels again during the course of next year uh, with dollar remaining strong. And if we look at this divergence, Andre, maybe you can also give us a little bit of colour. Um, you know, there's now this expectation that the eurozone is going to come under continued pressure because of what happened last week. Um, money needs to be spent in terms of beefing up security, beefing up, um, you know, attacks on various terrorist entities, etc. That's a drain on the economy that actually can't afford it right now. 
No, I think when you look at all the countries, they're going to be, you know, there's, there's rumors of them changing the Schengen rules now, yeah. you know, about, you know, free flow of, of people through, through Europe. So all those are, are, are massive barriers to, to an economy. You know, the tourism industry gets hit, mm. you know, airline industries get hit. And, and yes, when you've got quantitative easing that's, going in, that's coming out of the ECB, you don't really have, and I've, this has been my view from the beginning, I just, you know, it's not been a money supply issue, it's a demand yeah. for money, and all this points to less demand for money. That's exactly so the effectiveness the of, more, of more QE is going to be... It's benign. Uh, yeah, it's exactly. going to be really, it's, it's going to be totally, totally ineffective. So now we're going to bring the conversation back. So we're looking at the euro going down, back down to parity again, because there is this massive divergence, both from an economic perspective as well as an interest rate uh, dilemma in the US and the, and the eurozone. However, in South Africa, I mean, we really are sitting on sort of the perfect storm. We've got commodity prices that have come off. We've got um, risk off trade. We've got... Uh, We've got inflationary issues. We've got a retail um, number that's printing relatively low, which shows that the consumer's got no interest. And there's that potential, that underlying concern of, a, um, of the sovereign downgrade. So we've got an MPC today. I mean, that's a tough position to be. Andre, maybe you want to give us a bit of your view. I know you're going to be talking later on the panel. So give us your view in terms of what you think they're likely to do. I think there's an unchanged interest rate policy today from the MPC. Uh, from the MPC. Sad. No change. Sad. Sad, <laughs> but it's, it's driven. With, there's only one way. If we increase interest rates, we put our economy under further, under further pressure. Yeah, but and it is under pressure. So, so we're under pressure, but then the thing is, the question I'm going to propose to you now is why, if we're under this much pressure, and particularly if we're looking at imported prices and the RAND deteriorating at the level it is, surely there's some form of monetary policy that isn't going to make any difference on the consumer, but it's going to protect the RAND. Uh, yeah, but I think when you, if, you, if you're talking about protecting the RAND, 25 basis point hike or 50 basis point hike is really irrelevant. Yeah. I think the Saab, I think the Saab will go this today. I think a 25 basis point hike, when they look at the inflation forecasts that they've got the new RAND trajectory, mm. you know, there's a second breach that goes in towards, towards the end or third, fourth quarter next year. I think, you know, yes, first quarter breach they can look through, but a, a more sustained breach, given the level of the RAND, I think justifies them raising rates. And I think they've made it very clear. They want to get off there. Oh, we are in policy normalization. My view is that the Fed do raise rates in December. And it runs the risk of us having to go 50 basis points in Jan. Getting behind I think the it's, curve. I think, it's, yeah. I think it's very important that the Saab raise carefully, highlight, highlight the points and say, yes, we are concerned about growth. But the growth dynamic has been hit by inflation. Mm. You know, imported prices, all those things are pointing towards a lower growth trajectory. And this is not news. No, you know, I know. We've, we've struggled with this for the last two years. But the rate of deterioration is quite marked. So just on the last point before I make you guys give me your view on the week ahead, Andre, maybe you just want to quickly round up in terms of um, what are the key factors that you're going to be watching with the statement this afternoon? The key factors that I'll be watching is, is mainly the RAND, yeah. uh, the performance of the RAND on either an increase or uh, nothing that happens. But I'm concerned that if you raise interest rates to be in front of a curve, yeah, no, sure. That's not the problem. The problem lies on the structural side, on a fiscal side. But that's you not can monetary move policy. No, that's yeah. not monetary policy. And sure. You can do whatever you want to on monetary side. You can raise it 1% and you will not change anything other than put people under more pressure. Sure. You need fiscal change. I agree, but that's outside of the monetary that's policy outside. scope. So I'm going to wind it up there. I know this is exciting, but we, um, we're going to have a look and see where the guys think that the RAND's going to trade in the next week. Okay, guys, so I'm going to start with Andre because I haven't given you a lot of space today. Quickly give us your view, and it's interesting. I'd like you also to touch on what's happening with the Euro Rand and the Pound Rand as well, please. Okay. The Euro Rand, I would look at 40.95 towards the 1525 level, and on the Pound Rand, I would look towards the 2140, 2170 area, Dollar Rand 1390. 1420, and that's taking no change in interest rates into account. Good heavens, that's interesting. Okay, Andre? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, dollar rand, I think we will have, I think with a, with a hike, we'll see, you'll see some strengthening, but I still think it's going to be probably 14, 14 the figure I think is, is won't break. So I think 1430 to 
to 14 the figure on dollar rand. Euro rand is going to be a tough one. I think we're going to stay more or less around the, t the 15, 20 level. And sterling rand currently also around 21 and a quarter. Okay, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. So just in conclusion for the week, um, it really is going to hinge quite a lot on what happens today with the MPC. We're obviously going to be watching whether or not they decide to hike, as well as the comments around their concerns around this deterioration in the RAND, as those do have in, uh, inflationary impacts. For your ranges for the week, you're looking at RAND trading between sort of 30, 90, 14 levels up to those 14, 30 levels. And then on the Euro RAND, rain, ranging relatively uh, narrowly as we see the Euro deteriorate as um, in par with the RAND. But then on your pound, also looking for slightly weaker levels, also dependent on whether or not the RAND in fact does strengthen post MPC. However, if you'd like to send any of your questions or comments, you are more than welcome to do so at CNBC Africa, hashtag Currency Wars 410, or to myself at Bridget R. Taylor for your responses to the FX markets. Until next week, good luck in the trenches.